We left off with your casting on 64 stitches and joining the round and knitting your ribbing and then knitting your stockinette stitch down until you were ready to do the heel flap and the heel turn and the gusset pickup. Okay, a couple of things. First, remember that I'm using worsted weight yarn, which means I'm only working with 32 stitches. The next thing is, I couldn't resist. I had to show you a couple of other ribbings before I started to go on with my little bit of stockinette stitch. Sorry, just couldn't resist it. Anyway, and another thing I wanted to point out to you. When you were knitting a sweater, okay, let's say you were knitting a sweater in the round, this would be the bottom of your sweater and you'd be knitting up towards your neck. Okay, that's fine, but the thing that can be a little confusing as you work your way down your sock leg, this is actually the top of your sock. I know, I just wanted to point that out to you because as I was getting ready to shoot this little part of the video, I was flipping back and forth and back and forth and realized that could be potentially confusing. So, just wanted to point that out. Now, let's talk about this. I suggested that you do a knit to purl to ribbing. That's just fine and dandy. This is what that is. Now, remember that I am an extraordinarily loose knitter. So I've developed a couple of tricks to compensate for that looseness. This is a little sloppy here and it will get better, um, it would get better theoretically after I washed my sock, so to speak, but it's still a little, a little loose. What I like to do is, this is a knit two into the back loops, purl two. So knit into the back, knit into the back, purl two, knit into the back, knit into the back, purl two, all the way around. And see how that gets all nice and tight and the edges, you know, it makes it much more like a very rigid column for the knit purl. There's not actually that much difference in the elasticity. It's just one looks a little more tidy than the other. Now, another ribbing that I absolutely love, don't you just, just love the way I just went wandering off on this? Anyway, another ribbing that I love is one, it's called a knit one back purl one. Same as this, only it's in basically a twisted knit one purl one. So it's knit one back, purl one regularly, knit one back, purl one regularly. And again, this was regular purls in between here. So this one I like too. It's, it's, um, I like this one because I think it looks a little bit more feminine. And that could be just me, but I just think it looks a little bit more feminine than this very sort of rugged blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna get to that masculine feminine look in a little bit later when we talk about the heel flap as well. I must be overly sensitive to these things. Okay, anyway, so what you've done is you should have been knitting a knit two purl two ribbing unless you already had a preference for as long as you wanted it to. Remember we talked about how I tend to make mine long and then flip them over. We talked about that. And then you should have done your stockinette until you got down to where you wanted to start doing the right degree turn for your foot. Okay, let's review quickly. Remember that we're talking about you're going down your leg, okay? And what we're gonna be doing now is basically prepping for you to head down the foot. Question is, what happens in all of this space here to allow for what's a rather big turn to start heading down this road. Not that much of a problem. Your very first step is you've decided to stop here, right above your ankle bone, okay, right above where your foot would turn. You're gonna prepare by knitting along the back here a heel flap. Now, let me show you. What you do with your heel flap is you are only going to knit the heel flap on half of the stitches. So this half of the stitches are just gonna sit there. They're not gonna do anything because again, what you're gonna be doing, if you assume this is the top of your sock and you're marching down, this half of these stitches don't really have anything to do, okay? 
they are theoretically right here. They don't have to make a turn. It's these poor guys. Um, this half of the stitches have to make this huge turn around the edge. It's like when you have two cars turning on a road and one doesn't have as much to go as the other one. Well, these guys have nowhere to go and these guys have quite a bit to compensate for. Once again, I absolutely could not resist giving you a couple of examples. So, let's talk about how you work the heel flap. Remember, you're going to be working back and forth over those stitches, the back half of your stitches. So, these are two different kinds of heel flaps that have been traditionally used because they are a bit more durable. This is going to be the part of your sock that's going to get the wear from the heel of your shoe. And so this is a pattern that's been kind of designed to strengthen the stitches. Okay, this is a typical one. It's a column of slip stitches. And the other one I want to show you is what's traditionally called a partridge eye or eye of the partridge. And it is, I think, a little bit more feminine looking than the traditional column style. The other thing is I like the eye of the partridge if I'm using a hand painted yarn. If you can take a look at the heel flap on this sock that I knit, look at the heel flap. See, it would look odd if I had columns marching down. I think it would kind of I don't know, obstruct the beauty of the hand painted yarn. Whereas by alternating my slipped stitches, which is essentially what you're doing with Eye of the Partridge, I pull color into each, each little section, just almost like a bohas look. And I think it makes a very, very soft heel flap. And that's exactly what you're going to be doing when you knit your heel flap. You're going to slip the first stitch and then you're going to knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, and end with a knit, okay? You'll turn those stitches, just that half worth of stitches, and slip the first stitch and purl all the way across. Then you'll come back, and in the case of the column, you will slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, finish your row, turn, slip, purl. Now you'll notice there's going to be a consistency no matter which one of these two you use and that is going to be that you slip the very first stitch of every single row whether it's in the front or it's in the back and the reason you do that is by slipping the stitches you are making a lovely little column of smooth stitches on each side and these are going to be the stitches you will pick up when you begin to form the gusset of your sock okay if you don't remember what we were talking about with the gusset no worries it'll all become clear once we pick up these stitches but my point is be sure you're always slipping the first stitch okay now the difference with the eye of the partridge is just that this one for the column is basically two rows. You're going to slip, knit, slip, knit, oops, sorry, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, purl back. This one, four rows. You can see where we're going on this. You're going to go slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, purl back. The one that's a little harder to remember is the third row because you're going to slip, knit, two and then you're going to slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit until you get to the end and knit the last two and purl back. You're going to, so let's review that third row, which is the one that's a little odd, slip, knit, two, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit till you get to the last two, knit two, purl back. Okay, now what I want you to do is knit your heel flap for about two and a half inches. I got to tell you what I normally do is I actually make it the length of my ring finger. What can I tell you? That's how I measure it. Okay, when you're ready, come back and we will do your heel turn.